Good morning, folks. Plasma filament action visible in the opening here. We've got space weather, the hurricane, space science, and a look back at the last cyclical disaster on Earth. We'll start with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the top left. That second active region up there has crested, making for three total on the disk. Two top left, one bottom right departing. We had only a buffet of those minor filament motions, and the solar wind is markedly similar. Minor variation in the plasma stream, but wholly within low intensity range. Folks, here's what the sun looks like today in 304 angstrom showing ionized helium. It was an all red ball a year ago, but now the bright active regions begin to return at the start of cycle 25. Now just for your reference, in 2015 when the sun was just past its peak of cycle 24 and we still had relatively high activity, it looked like this. And that peak of last cycle in 2012 looked like this. Not only are the bright active regions numerous and huge, but look at the huge plasma filaments, those dark thin lines. We'll be back here in about two years. Luckily, by then, the magnetic pre-flare studies will have gained even more maturity, or at least we hope so. Magnetism has always been important for solar flare forecasting, but mostly in the sunspot polarity, rather than the flux ropes above the sunspot. Not anymore, and the science progresses. Here's the strongest storm on Earth and its pathway northward today. Nobody in the line of fire doesn't know it's coming, and it is set to run up the east coast of the state today and into tomorrow. We're going to skip off the moon as we go out into space here. Link below in today's list to the capstone project aimed at starting the Earth-Moon space version of GPS. As we go a little deeper out to NGC 2203 from Hubble, we find a gorgeous and colorful cluster, but you can also find lots of Easter eggs amidst the stars like giant galaxies hiding in the background, or more fun features like this tilted traffic light in the center of the image here. Many more I didn't show for the curious eye. Folks piggybacking on the exoplanet and astrobiology heavy week we had on the show, they are finding more reasons to believe planetary systems like TRAPPIST-1 are going to be common and have numerous zones within them where life might exist either on the surface or an underground ocean of those worlds. Up next, did you know there are mysterious green colored objects in space and they are so mysterious they just call them green objects? Well, it's true. And one in particular was so frustrating to an international team out of China, India, France, and Australia, they decided to use ALMA and other radio signatures of the region to decode the mystery. They found not only an amazing proto-cluster coming to life, but an ionized jet outflow, the telltale signature of stellar formation in the modern cosmos. Now while we're out here, Panda X took its second mega detection run for dark matter and came up completely empty. They really should not feel bad considering they did as well as every other dark matter search in history and that's probably because it doesn't exist, at least not in the magic, mysterious, undiscovered particle sense. Now hard to see dust and plasma, their electric forces, perhaps even strange phases of normal matter, maybe even a little modification of gravity. Those things could be real. We've got a B-plus examination of dark matter trouble here and some possible solutions only falling short of A-range gray due to a brief mention of baryonic-only models without much attention to that plasma universe. Up next, folks, they are looking at Europa and realizing that all those cracks and crevices are likely new, like freaky new, and that discovering their history is going to be even more challenging because they aren't where they started. Apparently, they're saying a true polar wander, which is a nice way of saying the moon flipped over, occurred very recently, and if I may, there were probably a lot more of those pluming water vapor jets when it happened. Now, how young is that? Well, that is a lot of guesswork, but with planetary system shakeups and cyclical disasters, we really shouldn't be surprised, no matter how young they say it is. And speaking of cyclical disasters, the last event obviously brought a sharp and major cold to the planet Earth, but that was not triggered by an impactor. The focus here on volcanic cooling shouldn't surprise many observers, even if the lack of strong geochemical signals had confronted this possibility for years. Today, we move on in the paradigm and now must add those volcanic events to the total list of last cycle events to explain. This is further not surprising, given the presumed levels of high cosmic rays at that time, due to both the sun's activity and the weaker magnetic field of Earth especially since those cosmic rays can radically change the viscosity and silica-rich magma. Now, speaking of the magnetic field of Earth, I'll be reviewing key works on the Sun-Earth relationship for tomorrow's news and a surprising publication on the ongoing pole shift of Earth, 
from world experts, and they say the danger is rising. That's coming tomorrow morning, but today happens to be the birthday of SuspiciousObservers.org. On this day in 2013, we uploaded the first episode of the Star Water series. Seven years later, over 500 videos later, hundreds of hours of podcast and deeper look explanations later, we still greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.